Factoring Review Factor completely x squared minus 7x plus 10. Well, there's a couple things we have to do first. First, we have to look and see if there's any common factors that I can factor out right away. And there's not. The next thing I do is I look at my leading coefficient. Since it's 1, I know I can factor as usual. If it wasn't 1, we'd have to use the grouping method. The last thing I do is I look at my 10. That's my constant. And what I have to do is think of all the multiples of 10. Well, 2 times 5, negative 2 times negative 5, 1 times 10, negative 1 times negative 10. Those all multiply to positive 10. But what I want them to add to is negative 7. So 2 plus 5 is a positive 7. But remember, we want negative 7. Well, negative 2 plus a negative 5 is my negative 7. So all I do is I take x minus 2, I get that right from here, times x minus 5. And I get that from right here. And you just factored it. Let's try this one. Remember, the first thing I have to do is look and see if there are any common factors. And there are. Each one of these terms has an x in it. So I'm going to factor out an x. If I take x to the third divided by x, I end up with x squared. 2x squared divided by x is 2x. And negative 3x divided by x is negative 3. Now I look inside of my parentheses. Once again, are there any common factors? Nope. Then I look to my leading coefficient. Since it's 1, I'm going to factor as usual. I look here at my constant, which is negative 3. And I start thinking of things that multiply to negative 3. Well, negative 1 times 3, 1 times negative 3. But remember, I wanted to add to a positive 2x, a positive 2 here. So negative 1 plus 3 just so happens to be my positive 2. I have to remember to bring this guy down. And when I factor, I end up with x minus 1. I get the negative 1 or the minus 1 from right here times x plus 3. And I get the positive 3 from this one. And you just factored it. Let's factor this one. Well, the first thing I notice is that I only have two terms. And then I look and see, well, this is a perfect square, this is a perfect square, and this is a perfect square. This is actually the difference of squares, and it's really easy. All it does is factor into 2x minus 9 times 2x plus 9. Let's factor this one. Remember, the first thing we do is we look and see, are there any common terms? And actually, there is. Three. There's a three in each of these. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to divide that out. 3x squared divided by 3 is x squared. Negative 9xy divided by 3 is negative 3xy. Negative 30y squared divided by 3 is minus 10y squared. Okay. Now I look at my leading coefficient, and it's a 1, so I'm going to factor as usual. Don't worry about these x's and y's, because I'm going to show you how that works. I look at my constant at the end, which is negative 10. And once again, I think of multiples of negative 10. Well, negative 5 times 2. 5 times negative 2. I want it to add to negative 3. Well, negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. So I know that's how it's going to factor. Remember, I pull down my 3 first. Now my answer is going to have an x and a y times an x and a y. And now all I have to do is just like we did the other ones. Here's my first, x minus 5y. And here's my second, 
x plus 2y. Now remember, if you're not sure, you can always FOIL to check. Now let's look at solving some. When I'm going to solve, I always have to have it, have it equal to 0. Okay. Well, this one's equal to 0, so we're good. Once again, I'm going to factor. I look here, and I don't have any common terms, common factors. <clears throat> I look here, and this is a 1, so I know I'm going to factor as usual. So I'm going to take negative 20. And I know negative 20 is negative 4 times 5, 4 times negative 5, and so on. But remember, I wanted to add to negative 1. Negative 4 plus 5 is a positive 1. 4 plus negative 5 is our negative 1. And that's what we're looking for. So this simply factors into x plus 4. Okay, and I get my 4 from right here into x minus 5, and those equal 0. To finish it off, to solve for it, I may make each part equal to 0. So I say x plus 4 equals 0, and x minus 5 equals 0. Now when I solve, I'm going to subtract 4 here, so x equals negative 4. That's my first answer. I'm going to add 5 to get x by itself in this one. And x equals 5 is my second answer. Let's solve this one. Well, first of all, we notice that it's not equal to 0. So we're going to subtract 15 from both sides because it has to equal 0 for us to solve. We end up with 2x squared plus 7x minus 15 equals 0. Now, I look and say, do I have any common factors? Nope, I can't take anything out. Then I look here. Well, I do have something other than a 1 here. So I have to, have to use the grouping method or the AC method. What that means is I take 2 times negative 15, which is negative 30. And I start thinking of all the multiples of negative 30. Negative 3 times 10, 3 times negative 10, and so on. I want them to add to a positive 7. Well, negative 3 plus 10 is 7. Now I'm going to rewrite it. 2x squared. But this time, and write it, instead of writing plus 7x, I'm going to write minus 3x plus 10x. Because negative 3x plus 10x is my 7x minus 15, and that equals 0. I'm going to continue with the grouping method, and I look at my first two, and I say, what's in common with my first two? Well, that would be an x. When I divide out an x, I end up with 2x minus 3. Now I look at my second two. What's in common with these two? Well, it's a positive 5. I pull out a 5, and I end up with 2x minus 3, and those equals 0. Well, remember, that's a good thing because these guys have to match or I did something wrong. To continue my grouping method, I look in this one, and I look in this one, and I say, what do they both have in common? That's right, 2x minus 3. And if I pull out a 2x minus 3, I'm left with an x minus 5. Now remember, this still equals 0. Just like the last one, we're going to make them each equal to 0. And then we're going to solve. I'm going to add 3. 2x equals 3 divided by 2. So I'm going to write it over here. x equals 3 halves. And that's my first answer. I'm going to add 5 to both sides here. And so x equals 5 is my second answer.